North America, Africa, South America, Asia, Catholic Sisters live and minister in almost every continent and country. Their ministries range from the hidden to the very public, from quietly serving the poor to publicly challenging the powerful. They are gospel women living in our modern world. Sisters arrived in the United States in the 1700s and served through waves of immigration, wars, and pandemics. They built most of the U.S. Catholic health and educational systems. After the Second Vatican Council, many congregations in the 1960s adapted their internal policies, dress, and ministries for modern times. Since 1964, as an independent, lay-led publication, National Catholic Reporter has written about sisters and their ministries. NCR and the women religious both took the Second Vatican Council very seriously. And we, as a company and as a publication, grew out of the excitement of a pastoral church and a church committed to service in the world, a service of justice and peace and mercy. And the women religious were doing the same. NCR covered sisters who marched for civil rights and peace, ministered to the poor, and served in Latin America, sometimes paying with their lives. NCR in the 70s and 80s were always there with the sisters and recognized that sisters were doing things that nobody else was doing. Sisters' congregations were growing in Asia, Latin America, and Africa. By 2009, NCR saw the need to increase its international coverage of sisters to reflect that growth and their dynamic ministries. NCR approached the Conrad N. Hilton Fund for Sisters for a grant to report on women religious around the world. Conrad N. Hilton, the noted hotel developer, had grown up in New Mexico and deeply appreciated how Catholic sisters had educated him and helped his family. He donated to sisters during his lifetime and directed in his will that his foundation support the work of Catholic sisters. NCR received a grant from the Fund for Sisters and the Conrad N. Hilton Foundation and began reporting more stories about sisters, conveying an important message. Religious life is not dying out, even though people in the North and the West may not see as many sisters as they did when they were young. Religious life was still alive and well and growing in these other parts of the world. And we wanted people to realize that sisters are still developing the church, still helping people who are in need, still working on the fringes of society. A larger idea began taking shape to further lift the profile of Catholic sisters around the world. In 2011, National Catholic Reporter received an exploratory grant from the Hilton Foundation to develop a website publication focused on sisters. Tom Fox and Sister Joyce Meyer traveled to Kenya, Uganda, and Rome. What we wanted to avoid was coming in uh, with a sense that we knew what to do uh, for the women religious. Rather, what do they want? How would they put together a communications network? Because after all, we are a communications company. And what would that look like? We wanted sisters to be able to write their own stories, and then journalists would be writing stories about sisters. In April 2014, the Global Sisters Report website launched with a mission to create a dynamic online community that reports on and gives voice to women religious around the world. Early stories featured sisters' many ministries. GSR also extensively covered two Vatican investigations of U.S. Catholic sisters, one into congregations 
and the other into LCWR, a leadership conference for many U.S. women's congregations. In addition to covering sisters' ministries and religious life, GSR also publishes columns written by sisters themselves on an array of topics. Younger sisters write columns every Friday. A popular feature, The Life, is written by a rotating international panel of 20 sisters. Global Sisters Report continues to grow its network of freelance journalists and sister columnists. It helps foster global connections among sisters, including reporting on international conferences. GSR also shows sisters' ministries in a larger context, such as helping to achieve the United Nations' 17 Sustainable Development Goals. GSR in the Classroom introduces high school and middle school students to sisters through their ministries. GSR has been recognized with awards for journalistic excellence. Catholic News Service and other media outlets regularly pick up its stories. Since its launch, Global Sisters Report has drawn millions of readers from over 193 countries and territories. GSR's presence on social media also helps share stories about sisters. If you look at it from a journalism point of view, and you look at the women religious, who are not only who we are writing about, but also the means by which we get to the stories. Global Sisters Report is by far the most radical, the most profoundly new, the most energetic reporting system in the world today. It has just mushroomed into a, a most wonderful organization. Sisters have always been one of the primary developers, I would say, of the church in Latin America, Africa, and Asia, and the United States. Sisters are entrepreneurs. They're creative. They take the gospel seriously, where Jesus says, go out to the ends of the earth to spread the gospel, and that's what they do. The storytelling that's going on in Global Sisters Report is a living spirituality and a living theology. It's not just stories. This is lived faith. These women religious, through the stories they're telling and through the coverage, they're forging a theology for the 21st century. GSR's coverage continues to highlight the lives and ministries of sisters all around the world who say yes to the call of the gospel in many generous and creative ways.